Hello, uh, I'm Tom Bramwell and I'm with uh, Simon Parkin here. Hi there, Tom. Hello. <laughs> this, uh, this is uh, one of our Games of 2013 videos uh, and we're going to be talking about Grand Theft Auto 5, which was um, the game that I thrust upon you to write about in our Games of 2013. Yes, you did, yeah, thanks for that. So why is, why is, it, why is it that you wrote about <laughs> Grand Theft Auto 5? Or what is it, that, uh, what is it that, you've, that you've thought about Grand Theft Auto 5? Obviously one of the biggest games of the year. Um, yes, well... Um, I mean, it's a bit of a challenge to write about in terms of um, summing up about uh, you know what you think about the the game at the end of the year because during the year so much was written about mm. it, particularly in that kind of two week window right after the game came out. Because, yeah. I mean, it really is. I think much more so than Modern Warfare and Call of Duty and those kind of really big video game entertainment releases. When a GTA comes around, everybody takes notice. Like mm. you know from from kind of specialist media all the way up to Radio 4 which was I think discussing it on its mm. Today programme and stuff so when you've got that many people interested in it there's going to be a lot of words written about the game so um, yeah there was a lot of activity uh, in terms of criticism and you know people saying what they liked about the game what they didn't mm. and then it kind of went quiet for a, for a couple of months and there so, was a bit sort of reason so once, once people had a chance to, to sort of let it sit with them for a while yeah I mean I think the backlash came pretty quick against the game yeah. you know but it was always going to because yeah. I think it's it's quite an easy target uh, these days for people and um, so you know you've got you know the very f early reviews kind of saying it's great and you know emphasising all the good things about the game Game and then kind of in the following week the, the negatives mm. but then also people going actually these guys are wrong and this is what's amazing I think that's really in terms of the game of the year piece I did what I wanted to look at is mm. why um, this game you know this huge game that's almost impossible to sum up or you know you have to come at it from a yeah. different angle and different people are going to experience it in such different ways and it's I think you know the argument I was trying to make is that this game is lots of games mm. you know all all at the same time and um, you know some of them are good and some of them are less good yeah absolutely one of the points I really liked um, in, in your piece uh, was just the the thing that really I really always adore about GTA games is the um, the astonishing attention to detail mm. that you find out in every area of the world yeah. um, and, and I think you get that don't you from the fact that they spend five years making these things with hundreds of people yeah. whereas games like you know that you mentioned like Call of Duty you know, made on a sort of 18 month or yeah. not even that cycle yeah. there's very little going on in those games once you stray away from the little corridor you're moving yeah. down yeah there was a, um, a rare interview with um, is it Leslie uh, Benzies, Benzies yeah. yeah in Develop Magazine which is an ind kind of a trade publication so it was quite unusual to, for, you know, it's sort of aimed at developers, isn't it? Aimed at developers, yeah. Um, and they went to the studio, and he was talking about, you know, the final five percent that uh, Rockstar would do on their games, which is, um, you know, oh, I'm kind of, you know, low to use the word polish, but it is that kind of mm. additional five percent that, that that he says they they put on their games that really the other blockbuster devs, you know, don't quite bother with. And mm. I think if you play. GTA 5 back to back with something like um, the uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag which I think is an excellent game but that level of just the way that the cameras yeah. move or just the, the smoothness of the interactions into and out of cut scenes just isn't there on the games that have a you know a 12 or 24 month um, dev time Absolutely, I, I, I reviewed both those games and the th I remember when I was playing Assassin's Creed 4 thinking god I wish this had been um, given another you know couple of years or something because right. you'd arrive at these little tufts of land in the middle of the ocean mm. and you know not you know I'm not saying I wish Rockstar had made it but if you if it were in a Rockstar game yes. there would have been something different or, or unique going on in those little right. islands whereas in in, uh, in Ubisoft's game because of its its tight element cycle where there was very little um, beyond, yeah. beyond a few things to you know collect or whatever yeah that's right and it do, I mean I think to create a world like Black Flag I mean we're not talking about Black Black Flag but it, it helps make the point in that when you're making a world that large you end up up being quite repetitive mm. um, in you know both you know you've got the the kind of forts that are repeated I don't know there's mm -hmm. like 12 or 13 of them aren't there and, and then you've got all of the islands and they're all quite samey exactly mm. like you say whereas I think the thing with Los Santos in GTA 5 is the diversity of the environment yeah. and it really feels like a place and it's you know one corner of the map looks completely different to the, yeah. to the other corner so. I mean it's amazing when you go from that transition from the desert for example over the hills into the city yeah. it's funny actually I mean the, the Looking back, uh, Far Cry 3 is, a, is an example of a game that was made on a, 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 sh a relatively short time scale. But by having that extra year or whatever, it had that much more yeah. attention to detail. Like all of those radio tower takes downs were, were a different sort of um, layout and all the, all the sort of um, 
I forget what they're called, the little forts you take down. But um, anyway, yeah. stop talking about Far Cry 3. Um, something else that um, was quite interesting, I think this was a point made by um, Lee Alexander, uh, I forget where she, she wrote this article, so apologies for that, but the, the point that it, it feels like a less uh, rebellious, a game with less of a rebellious streak than it used to feel like back in right. the day. Yeah. But it used to be really countercultural, and it was the mm. game that you played to annoy your parents or to, um, or because, you know, you, you, um, you, you really... You wanted to go against, uh, you know, what what was accepted. Whereas now, perhaps GTA feels uh, like kind of the best of maybe, but but certainly one of um, mm. the crowd in that respect. You know, it's it's it's, yeah. it's not pushing in any particularly dodgy or, or dicey or interesting, yeah, risky I, directions. I think that's true. Yeah, that is true. I mean, certainly, and I think in that same piece that Lee wrote, she you knows she, uh, which I echoed in in the game of the year piece, is just about the disappointment over the three male protagonists. And yeah, I know, kind of, you know, some of our audience will probably roll their eyes and go, "Oh, you know, it doesn't." They wanted to tell a story with three guys; they should be allowed to do that, and that is absolutely true. But at the same time, it is slightly disappointing that mm. they couldn't kind of just yeah. have a different perspective in the mix. And I think. The bigger problem than maybe the gender question is really that the three of the three main protagonists have very similar things that they're going for, similar yeah. objectives and similar um, obstacles to get those, and so it can feel quite the same. Even though that you know, even though visually it's quite a diverse cast and they're coming mm. from different places in life. One's a social outcast. One is someone in witness protection who's a family man, mm. you know, or trying to be a family man. And another is you know, basically someone just coming into adulthood um, mm -hmm. so you know you've got that you've, you've got you know fairly different positions in society but I think their motivations are all quite similar and it, yeah. it can feel quite samey and, and and that's you know I think what Lee is getting at there is you know that's a little disappointing and also the I think the target of the game satire is um, problematic you because yeah, I mean, you, you made the point that you know it's 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 sort of it's imprecision. You know, the fact that it goes after almost everything is is a little bit um, yeah, we, a little bit unfocused. And I understand why that's happened because the Rockstar team is is obviously very large. You've got, you know, I guess the script is written by um, Dan Hauser and, and you know his his small team of mm. writers around him. But at the same time, you you probably got developers in Edinburgh who are you know coming up with jokes of uh, mm -hmm. NPC dialogue or coming up with funny names of shops and all of that kind of stuff so you've, you've actually got you know probably scores of people feeding yeah. into their satirical look at the city and it's probably very difficult to get a kind of coherent authorship within yeah. that when you've got such a large team of it's, writers it's and interesting isn't it I mean one of its, its, its strengths obviously as a game is that it has that massive um, scale and uh, of both development and, and, and ambition but um, you know, as a negative um, side to that, you know, it does mean that it, it kind of it, it, it doesn't have a sort of coherent sort of polemic sort of to it, and also um, uh, it. Uh, I've lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. exactly that's exactly true. And that w what I, I said in the piece is, it doesn't. You know, you you want most satires should be punching um, punching upwards, right? Mm. Um, and and these it, guys live in like a uh, million dollar apartments and stuff themselves. And, yeah, and uh, you know, it and, just and the, and, the, and the outcome of the game is that uh, they steal loads of money and then they get to keep it. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Well, maybe so. that maybe that maybe it's a darker satire <laughs> than, than we've really uh, identified. And the, the the point actually about. Um, uh, about the lack of um, uh, any female characters or, or playable characters, certainly. Um, I, I sometimes think with um, with, and it's not only a, a criticism exclusive to Rockstar, but I sometimes think that these large developers don't necessarily understand the sort of the responsibility they have as as these massive sort of um, entities at the top of our industry to, you know, try to change attitudes around things like that. So you know, the, the like if you're you're looking at sort of top directors in in film, for example. There's an air of sort of social and political responsibility to their work. Um, not everyone, but certainly quite a few of them. Whereas um, game creators often in interviews say, well, you know, we're not trying to, to, to say anything here or, you know, we don't, you know, or they, or they sort of refuse to engage with topics like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't really like that. Mm -hmm. I sort of wish that there were a few, um, especially a company like Rockstar, which clearly does not give a crap about anyone. Um, you know, there were a few of them who just kind of went, you know what, let's make a point. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, there, this, this shouldn't... Um, Take away from the fact that GTA is a very excellent game that we, I think, both hugely enjoyed. Um, what's the most uh, ridiculous thing you've done in GTA? Oh, uh, well, probably what I, I quite liked writing a game of the year piece, which ends in my own suicide. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that was probably the the silliest thing. I, I you know, I 
I've done, but it felt, I don't know, that it was an amazing moment for me, um, just mm. being, you know, riding off away from the city um, on the waves. And it, it really does have the best sea mm. I've ever seen in a video it's game. Crazy, like, you know, and so much better than even in, you know, the next gen titles that mm. have seas. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, I mean, I found it so affecting just the, you know, being able to, to ride over there while listening to the radio, it sounds silly, yeah. but there was a real sense of aesthetic wonder, which I think is the great power of, of video games Absolutely. You know, to do that um, so I mean not particularly silly but I, I don't know you know I've watched videos of people doing amazing feats and you know for me it's weird I, I for a game series that's renowned for its sort of sandbox behavior and people doing things of you know uh, creating their own fun and so on um, the thing the thing that stuck with me is the memory of a couple of the really scripted missions like mm -hmm. I thought they got so much better at that with this mm -hmm. one yeah I think probably my favorite and one that everyone talks about is the one where um, Trevor who's a, a bit of a madcap character uh, pretty, I think he basically derails a <laughs> train him off a bit. by yeah right by jumping on top of it with a motorbike and then right. I can't even remember what he does. That's something involving a helicopter and but it just it, it's it's one of those scripted um, missions that video games do so often these days. But you feel a part of it constantly and it's very funny and it's just it's it's GTA at its least. Um, uh, it's it's when it's it's trying least to force its kind of. Um, edginess on you it's just being a, a ridiculous mm -hmm. video game at that point yeah but celebrating it that, yeah. yeah which is something that um, you know I think Saints Row 4 which also came out this year which you know started off as a poor man's kind of GTA has really embraced that mm. side of the GTA lineage and the, yeah. um, and it was a, an amazing game I think because of that and th that has been lost a bit in mm. the GTA uh, inevitably because they're kind of curving towards realism mm. and to, you know towards creating functioning cities that are lifelike and all of that and as soon as you start doing that the silliness of video games mm. can get lost yeah Anyway, that's probably about all we can uh, we can fit into this video. So thank you so much, Simon, for joining me. No worries. Thank you. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. This was one of our Games of 2013 videos, uh, of which there are a bunch of others. Please subscribe to our channel if you want to watch those and, you know, other stuff. And I hope you all have a very nice Christmas, as I'm sure some does as well. Yes. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. Bye, guys.